Okay. In this second half of, of the training, we're going to go through manual testing. So it's going to be kind of practical. So and at the end of the this session, there will be an assignment for everyone to, to do so that you can lay your hands upon it and also use the techniques that Tokwe spoke about. Uh, I'll go through quickly on some of the techniques. So focusing on two that I think are very important and look at it again. So because we are going to use it in this particular uh, training. So yeah, so okay. One, I think one one. Okay, let's go through normal scenario, right? So normal scenario of how you start your testing, what you need to do, and also then we consider the um, techniques also with it. So let me bring a website up. So let's see okay. okay. Can everyone see this website? So, all right, that's fine. So what's going to happen now, I would first try to go through the steps without using the tool. Then also, then after that, I would use the tool. So that's the approach I'm going to use. So also considering the fact that uh, we just gone through the uh, tutorial uh, about the test techniques. Two techniques I want us to focus on is equivalent partitioning, uh, which is also equ equivalent class partitioning. And also, the second one is boundary value analysis, right? So just a quick recap, equivalent partitioning is of the notion that most of the things that you can test can be partitioned into different classes. For instance, life, every, most often everything in life can be divided. So let's say for instance in two parts, you have life, you have death, you have a boy, you have a girl, you have man, you have woman. You are, so you can, you can partition your test data into different classes, if not at least into two classes, invalid and valid positive, negative, in or out. So when you are running your test, you need to take that at the back of your mind. Or when you are designing your test data or your test cases, you need to consider every class in that particular uh, test data or your test output. So if you have an application that accepts, mm, mm, let's say, even or odd numbers, so let's say you accept even number. Let's start from that. As simple as that possible, just put an even number. So what's going to happen is that your test data could be divided into two, one that even number, one with odd numbers. So what that means is that even number is a valid number that the application will accept. 
But however, you don't just stop there. You need to also consider the invalid part, which is the odd numbers. So that would mean that you now have two test data or you have your test cases written in two places. So one for the invalid one, one for the invalid ones. So the same way also, if you have uh, an application that accepts sex of people, so you say, okay, enter your sex, you know there's female and there's male. So when you are going to design your test data, you need to consider that, oh, I need to put male, I need to put female. I think Topper also mentioned that, for instance, if you are testing the application and you are only using male, 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 male every time, no matter how many times you use it, it's going to be only one test data. I think last week I also talked about some of the fallacy in, in testing. So if you use the same test data many times, you're only doing one test. So that's where you need to know uh, when to use these techniques. So Another one also that you also mentioned is equivalent, uh, no, I've, met, I've talked about equivalent partition, now boundary value analysis. So most often when developers are developing codes, some of the issues sometimes happen at the boundary. So a good example is when the developer is trying to write, or it happens even in you, for some mathematics, maybe let's say, for instance, you are uh, writing an exam and you are trying to prove a theorem, right? And then you write less than. And you, for, you wanted to write less than or equal to, right? But because you are rushing, you just write less than and you forgot the equal to. So you might as well get somewhere, but it's not what you're looking for because you mix, you actually missed one of the uh, sign you didn't put the equal to. So the same thing happened during coding, right? Developers going for break or uh, out of distraction. So you forgot to uh, write the sign properly or you omitted some of the signs, or instead of saying less or equal to five, he thought it should be greater than um, less than five, or he thought, oh, I'm this, okay, good example, you have an application that accepts one to five. So, and he's trying to say, where should I stop? Should I say my number is less than five? Or do you say your number is equal to five before you stop? Or do you say your number is, less than six or do you say greater than six those things is what the developer needs to consider before when he's writing his code and the same notion as a tester that's where you need to now consider also in when you are writing your code so having that at the, at the back of your mind now you are not giving this particular website to to test so a good example is Login, let's say, let's consider registration. You click on registration. Okay. Now, one thing I would say is you have email address. So you can see just put in test, it says, please enter valid email address. So one, I can say test at gmail.com. That is a valid email address. So even though I'm meant to test this, right, using my email address, so I should not only just test it using valid email address. I need to test it also using invalid email address. So that is me using equivalent um, class partitioning. So because I'm considering invalid data and also I'm considering valid data. So, but now in emails, there are different level of invalid data. So that's where you need to group them into different part. One is one, you have 
test without any anything at all and even if you have that also that's not valid right so even if you say Gmail that also is not is there's app there and there's no valid and if you say dot com also and you have that that also is not valid so in that regard you have different classes one is like there's no presence of art the one is you have art within that but there's no dot com there's no dot or com or something you say you do something like that so for all this you should be careful not to be testing the same thing every time but to know that what are different classes I am considering then you cannot use them so now last week we talked about the test process right to say when you start testing what are the things that you need to do you need to create your test cases you need to that's why we went through the test techniques the test techniques helps you to create your test cases or your test data so that you know what are the type mm, how do we create those test data so now let's go through those in practical time right so you're giving this to test in normal scenario i'll tell you later we retract again so and look at the requirements and then we'll be able to do that so so i would open this so now i just created this just a moment ago so to be honest so it's kind of it was like that so i didn't want to waste your time having to yeah type this in so you have a plain excel sheet and now you want to write your steps on how to create your test data or your test cases so i just create this template So. okay so one I just created this test condition I spoke last week about test conditions which is what is the these are the features that you want to test for the part that I explained to you I'll say registration So we want to test registration. So now you have that as the t your test condition. So now serial number one. This is number one. Action. What are the actions in order to test registration? What do you need to do? What are your actions? Then how do you um, go about about that? The first one. Let's say go to giftread.com. So that's your first action. So when you are running you, your test, you need to have at the back of your mind what your expected behavior should be like. That means what is the behavior that you're expecting the application to to have. So which more often than not comes from the requirement i will give you an instance of a requirement that we've got in vicious to do this is an example but we are not using this right now this kind of advanced so i will use this later so you will be given the requirement which explains what the application should do and like for instance in terms of registration so when register how do you register and uh, what you expect to see when you do register so that is going to be explained or written down in your requirements so but this is on the assumption that everyone knows how a normal registration page should, should look like you know how to register on a page so that's why I'm trying to do this so now expected behavior if you go to gifrit 
Com. What do you expect to, to happen? So I'll put the page is display or maybe better say the home page is displayed correctly. So your actual behavior, you don't need to feel it right now. That comes later because the first thing you do is create your test cases first before you execute. When you are executing, that's when you put your actual behaviors, which is like when you do these steps and you're expecting this, what actually did you get? Okay? But right now, we are not going to fill this section for now. We're going to continue with the other uh, steps. Step number two. Click on registration. So click on, I think the right one is not registration. So click on register link. So then what should we see? The register registration page is displayed. Good. So now that is me doing that. So that takes us to yeah, that takes us to this page. So, but like I said, we're going to use the equivalent partitioning. So which is now we need to consider a valid scenarios. And also we need to consider our invalid scenarios. Okay, so now for valid scenarios, I can actually say Okay, or uh, for invalid registration using invalid data. Okay, so now I'm actually at this point. So number three, I can say enter invalid email address. So let's say test out Jimmy. So what am I expected uh, expected to see? An error message is displayed. So Number four. So enter invalid test data. So you expect to see the same thing also. So on and on you because this is now your invalid uh, test data. So this is a class on its own and you consider everything that can contribute to an invalid test data. So you put them in this particular test condition. So and you put your expected behavior. So 
that is that. So I'll copy that again. So now we consider the valid one now. So using valid data. So we see how that okay. okay, so now you enter valid email address. So dot com. So then you say email address is accepted. Any error message. So then you continue also with other ones. Enter um, is a first name enter surname so and what do we have? Enter password enter click on capture. Confirm password. Validate the capture. Then click on submit. Sign up. Okay, so now I can leave all this one. So because it's going to be the same thing, you know, surname is entered successfully or something like that. So, but this is very important. So click on sign up. Mm, maybe I can make that explicit button. Then the user is registered. Successfully. Successfully. So, yeah, that is that. So, that is one another test condition. So, also, you may also want to consider another invalid test condition, which is now registration. With omitted required field. So, in this particular test, you want to omit some part of uh, required fields. So, you go to the Giffrey.com, click on register, then here you can say enter all fields except password or leave password blank. Then what do you expect to to get? And error 
message is displayed that password is required so that is one another one is to say okay now click on another one this we can consider uh, password and confirm password fields mismatch so in this regard now you want to okay so I think I will leave you to finish those ones so then what do you expect to see so is you trying to put let's say one two three four five six here seven but here you put one two three four five and then you should expect to see yeah please enter the same password as above so that's what you're trying to verify so and there's other ones also maybe you didn't click on capture so i'll leave you to go through that's going to be the first assignment to go through all invalid and invalid um, scenarios in this registration page to go through them and write your own test cases that's going to be the first assignment so write test cases for all invalid scenario and all the valid scenario and then send it to to me so now that is that so in this regard so this is when we try to pull uh, equivalent class partition into into parties so then also let's consider this okay this is another requirement searching for a product so in this regard you can decide to write each one of them as different test condition so you are searching a product but you are searching based on the title you search based on description i'll quickly do this then we go with the different ones so let's say this is registration and then upgrades okay that's this is now searching okay just copy the other okay so the first one we want to do search is in title so these are going to have kind of precondition so we see so for for you to test this particular uh, requirement you need to have have created an item is this assignment for registration yes the that last assignment is only for registration as time as we continue i'm going to tell you the other assignment so yeah for this now we are searching based on the title like i said you need to have uh i've already created an item so and uh, you want to search on that website to be sure 
the item displayed by its title. So the first thing you're going to say create an item with title let's say what's that let's say mm, my test my test okay now you can see in this regard I didn't actually start with um, go to give free or something like that some people can actually doing that for everywhere so so you can number one go to okay now I need to point that out like give free is a live environment so there's also a dev environment that when you are as a tester, you don't normally test on the live environment because that's what the user see. So they will give you an environment, which is the development environment. That is the environment that you are allowed to do anything that you want to do. So because then you can decide to post what you want to post, you know, do whatever you want to do there. It's not visible to the client or to the user. So that's the environment that you'll be working as a user, not on the live environment. So. So for gift rate is that uh, this environment. So, so I need to change the other one. So go to give that environment and the same way you put your expected behavior as we did last time. So uh, this, this should be number two. So create an item with title. This is another way to write a test because this is now kind of not explicit so because this on its own is another um, embodiment of different steps because to create an item maybe you need to register after registration click on post add so all this you need to you, you don't need to t put those steps in this particular one so then number three so third step now go to excuse me okay sorry about that so now you need to go to okay let's see click on i think it's search or something like that so i'm not sure so let's see what that is i think it's yeah Okay. Okay, so So you click on free product, then number four, search for the poster product, by text. Or I can as well just say, enter the text my test item then you click on I think it's find or something 
Yeah, filter. So So you can see now I didn't actually put some expected behavior so you could fit that in the same way but I'm also more particular about the last part when I click on the filter button so I would say my expected behavior is going to be that the uh, the product uh, what's his name my test item is displayed and no other product is displayed or I could just say only product item my test item is displayed just yeah so that's what you want to do so said can we share the template in whatsapp I'm not going to do that so I'm uh, apology for that you can see I started the same way it's no there's no template at all so and I think that's a good way of of training so I don't share this template so you can as well just create it on the fly which I've done it's not that like you can see I didn't actually bring that template from anywhere I just started the same way so so I think it's not something that is difficult for everyone to do so um, and also moreover you have the video to to look at how to create that template so yeah that is that so then this is the first one and I said we want to use the equivalent partition no sorry the boundary value analysis so now you can do the same thing for as in searching through description so and also searching with the type of the product whether wanted or offered this is where I want to now use so in this regard you can use equivalent part, um, class partitioning so which is like you test the valid and you test the invalid the same thing how do you test the invalid search for a wrong title which is not in the database you should not get anything out so also the same way you search for the one that you are sure is there so and you cannot use uh, what's it called uh, boundary value analysis in most cases I would say in most cases you use um, uh, boundary value analysis for numbers so that's why it brings us to this particular one so which we have numbers and we have different numbers so which is you want to search by distance so let's say now I write my test cases So 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 now I've created my item or product so and I call it this, this now I want to search that particular product so so I want to search that product based on distance so that is that so you want to search based on one meter one mile from you 
or you want to search from that. So that should return only product of a mile from you. So now to use um, boundary value analysis, you need to know which one is your location. For instance, I live in Welling. So because I live in Welling and I've got one mile radius for myself will be Bromley side and everything. So, and the same way you need to say, okay, now, Everything that's going to be displayed here should be one mile, one mile radius from where you live. So the same way when you post an item, you post an item that's one mile radius to you, and you put the location one mile radius. So then you'll be able to see that particular item displayed. So for instance, if you now post an item that is five mile radius, that I say you, so you should see that item not displayed in the one mile radius, but you should see that item displayed in the five mile radius. So that's how to use the, you know, the boundary value analysis. Now, I'll put that into my test cases. So create a product that with, I'll start with, with location. Five for me. So how do you do that? I think I'll 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 leave it to figure out. One way is, is to put your uh, location on Google, and then after that, you know, five mile radius from myself will be like that. Ford. Then I create a and yeah, a product in Darford. I said this product is in Darford. Then from there, when I search that particular product, then I should be for five mile radius, I should be able to see that. So that is the first thing I do. Then I can now say search for products within five miles radius. So I can decide, I can also do something like, uh, like I did in this, in this where, yeah, I can do something like click on free product, search for items. So I can, I'll click filter with these three steps. But this is three steps is what I've joined together to make only one steps. So that's another way to put it But you need to be sure that someone else can take this te uh, test case and execute it without having to call you. So if you module up the steps together, it should be self-explanatory. That's what is a rule of thumb. Or you can go through each step one at the, at the other, like click on free products, search for this, and click on that. So you can you can do that also in the same way. But also you could also put them together as long as it's yeah, someone can actually understand what you are saying. So search for product within five mile radius. So then you should know that that the product posted above should be displayed. So also you could now, that's for five miles, you could do the same thing for 10 miles based on your test cases here. So you want to consider that 10 miles also work, so you create 10 miles, you create 50 miles, so you can as well consider those ones, or also you do also nationwide. So you want to be able to see that this, uh, all this uh, drop down work based on that. So you need to create test cases for them. So that is how to use equivalent partitioning. So one, you want to be able to see that one mile is there, three miles is there, five miles is there. Uh, did I say, equi equi no, I said boundary value analysis. So that is you working within the boundary. So for instance, you want to do 50 miles so you know that when you do your 50 miles, you should, things within the 50 mile radius should be displayed. So now, 
when it becomes interesting, it I've created one for five miles. So also means that when I go and search for ten miles radius, the five miles also should be included. So that's where you now have to now consider all the all those scenarios. So when you search for thirty mile radius, what you created for five miles should also be included. So also when you now go and search for one mile radius you should know that what you created for five mile is not included. So that's you now also bringing the uh, equivalent partition also into that because you are now considering the invalid scenario with that. So that's how that is. So the second assignment is to now consider all these scenarios to see how do you test them. So using your test cases that I've highlighted out here. So you need to now uh, consider that so searching using uh, distance so you need to consider all this. the second assignment is you now write your test cases that consider all the scenarios yeah both negative or valid or invalid uh, scenarios using boundary value analysis so and also consider the negative and positive testing. So that is that. That's the practical part of of that. So now, this is you using without using any tool at all, right? So in some cases, you might need to use a tool to design your test cases. The assignment that you are meant to do, you need to use it in Excel, so you don't need to worry about any tool. So, but there are other tools that help you to design your test case. So I'm going to go through one of them. There are many of them. So this tool is called uh, Test Manager. So, so it's by Microsoft. It's on Visual Studio. It comes with many you know, lenses of Visual Studio. So, and you can yeah just Google it out and yeah. So one, okay. Let me go back. Okay. So now this is a requirement that we are testing. So now you can then create a test case for that particular requirement. Add link. No, sorry. Add link new item. So I want to add a new link, and what am I adding? What is the type of the work uh, work item type? It's going to be a test case, and what's going to be my the title of my test case? So I will use the same sample I've done here. Searching, I call it searching using title so and that's it so at this point is only requesting for the title of that particular uh, test case that I'm writing so then you click on OK so now you have this the title is here and you know, I, I won't bore you with all these details right now, which is not required uh, at this particular point. So later, oh, I think there's a session for Agile. So we're going to go through what this means, iteration and areas and different states. But now we only considering the test uh, cases, uh, what goes in. You can see now you have your steps which is the same thing I've written here as a serial number. So, and now I can decide to change that to steps, but I put SN because most people know what that is, noise number. So you could as well change that to step number. So, but, so you can see, so I will just mark it with the two. So now action, what's my first action on that step? So go to, uh, no. 
go to gifreak.com. So I pull that. So this is my first action. Then what's my expected results on that? I didn't put anything, but I can decide to say uh, the page is displayed successfully. So then also number two, you can as well copy that. So number three, step three, click on free products, search for items. So, so click on free products. Then Enter. What's that? So now you can see, click on feature button. At that point, I'm also very, very, I want to consider my expected results. So, which is like only the results. Of results, I'll say products. Okay, so that is what you need to do on and on, on and on when you are designing your test cases. So, um, so please do the assignment. is very very important because that's going to form the basis of our, of our automation um, test cases. Also, what you do in your manual test, you also need to automate it in future. So now, that's you designing your test cases. I've not actually run it. I've not gone through the steps. So after you design your test cases, the next one is execution. You know, last week I mentioned about the process, right? The process of you, you analyzing your test and also you design your test and also then you implement your test. So which is now, the next one to do is now implementation of your test so or uh, execution of your test so this is where you now have to now take your test and say go to gifrit um, dev.gifrit.com and you go and you go enter So, and this was going to happen. And you say, oh, what's the actual behavior? And you said, yeah, the page is displayed. Successfully. Your result, you can say, Pass. Okay, so it now go to the next step. Create an item with that title and everything. You do that step also. Post. You put. Okay. You 
Yeah, you log in and you put everything. You go through that steps, I think, not now. Oh, okay, sorry. I don't remember the password. So, okay, well, never mind. So, apparently, you post it and also you go through that steps. So, I think I've done, I've already logged into to the live one. So, okay, you click on free item, you and said you post your item, you click on, then you click on free products and you start to search. So in that regard, you need to go through that steps. That's what you now call execution. What you've written there, you now go through it one after the other. You do what you've written down. In some cases, it might not be you that have to do it. It might be transferred to another person to go through it. So, but that's the steps. After you've written your test cases, you now need to do that. So, then after that, this is what happens. If, for instance, you are this particular step, and you say, enter the title of the item, and that was okay. But when you click on the filter, this the item that was returned or the product that was returned did not actually match the title. So that is kind of, uh, that's what it is called a bug. So because there is, seems to be uh, discrepancy between what the requirement says and what you are actually finding. Or there seems to be discrepancy in what your test, your expected behavior and also from your actual behavior. So what you need to do is now you raise a bug or you raise a defect. So in test manager, you do the same thing, click on here. So, sorry, let, I need to save this first. Okay, so now I need to create a new link and then you put a bug. So what is the bug? Put the title of the bug. Uh, what's it? Title. Short of the And you click on that. So now you put your step to recreate. So what are the steps that you need to do? So which might be similar to what your test cases said. So like on the login, create a step, create your item, then search by the title and everything like that. So you put your step to recreate. So this also will help the developer to go through your step and also try to recreate what you found. And then also, you put your accepted acceptance criteria, which is like if you want to establish that this test or this bug is passed, what are the criteria that you need to look into? That which sometimes will be that after I have followed this particular step, and then I should be able to see that the results returned by the title search match what I'm expecting. You put that in there. So, and you click on save. So, so that's how to create the box. So I've gone through to, just to recap what I've gone through. So we've used two techniques. One of them is the equivalent uh, class partitioning. 
which allows you to divide your test case or test output into different uh, classes. So, and also, we've also used the boundary value analysis, which is which allows you to design your test case based on the boundary of your test data. So, and also, we've gone through how to write our test cases using MANA Excel sheets, starting from there, and also, we've also looked into how to use it using the test manager. So how you put everything into test manager. So and there are two assignments that are given to you, which is you write this, uh, complete the invalid scenario for the registrations, and also complete the valid and invalid scenario for search using distance. So I think that is us today in manual testing. So other ones will follow the same process. So, and then also we might still also consider some part of manual testing during automation. So, and that is us for today. If you have any question, so this is time to ask. So next week we'll meet at the same time. So, and yeah, so, so, okay, so, yeah, so if there's no, I will just wait for one minute, so if there's no question, so we call it a night, so uh, as you can, security testing, someone mentioned that, okay, would security be test, mm, security testing, will be covered in this training. No, no. So this is not will be covered, not even in the manual testing. So it's kind of another uh, specialized testing area, I would say, which is not my area of specialization. I will, I will put that caveat out or disclaimer. So, but yeah, so it's, it's not going to, there are different areas of testing. Is there performance testing or different non-functional testing? But you need to know what that entails and everything, but it's not, it's not to be covered in this training. So, yeah. So if you are not sure what's going to be covered in this training, I would advise you to go through the course, uh, the course page and to see what we will cover. So, okay. In the absence of any question. Okay, uh, how do we get access to Visual Studio? So, I, I would say I'll send an email out, so it's going to be, so you can, you can download it, it's free, it's free, but uh, for some guys that would uh, get there will be internship, uh, let me put it to that out. So in the course of this week, I'll send the emails out for people that want to have practical experience during the training to apply for an internship program. To be honest, if you don't have five hours, don't, don't bother. Uh, so it, you can, you can do it as it, uh, on your leisure time, but the internship, the internship is going to be intense. So five hours in a week. So for those guys that have that time, I would give them access to the Visual Studio so that they can practice and also put them into different groups. It's kind of a very big group for this particular um, training. So you might have to be in different groups. So which is another network opportunity. We have some people that's got a lot of experience in the team, even though they are also doing the training. Some people have got like almost seven or eight years experience. Maybe as a automation tester with C sharp, but they are trying to learn about Java. Or as a manual tester, I've got even test manager even on the on the course. So the internship also is another way to network and because you're gonna be broken down into smaller teams. 
so like five or six people, then you can be able to share your ideas or something like that. So it's going to be those people that uh, that are successful for the internship. It's not going to be for everyone. I'll, I'll say so. So and if you are not yeah successful, don't take it. It's, it's, it's okay. So and also based on on how I've seen people react in the group, I mean people join the um, online training. <laughs> so I can see how I many people joined and what has the participation and everything. So so those are going to be considered. So by next week I will send the uh, or yeah or before next week I'll send that out so that you can apply. So okay. In the any more question? Okay. So if you don't have any questions, so we'll meet next week. And I'll see you then. So bye-bye, everyone.